What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to The Hoop Show. My name is Ben Reeve. I'm not quite on the camera very good there, but uh, I'm joined. My guest today is Anna Pavlou. Uh, welcome back, the always amazing Anna. How are you going? I'm okay. Bit of a tough weekend, but still reigning premiers, so what can you say, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll get in. We'll pull it apart. There wasn't the result we wanted. Collingwood fans are a cock a hoop at the moment, uh, and they had, I think they had their family day today celebrating the 2023 premiership. But that's good. Let them let them enjoy it for a, for a, another couple of weeks until or a few more days until they lose round two and it's all coming back cr- crashing down to earth again. Um, all right. So if you haven't watched this show before, uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, Please like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, but uh, we have got a few things to cover off on today. So we'll go through the Collingwood game. We'll have, we'll have a chat about that. Thank you, Brad. You've done a fantastic effort there. I'll just hide you. You've pumped your fist long enough for me. Thank you. Off you go, Brad. Um, and uh, we'll go through the Collingwood game. We'll talk about some... Uh, we'll give our votes. We'll, we'll, we'll have a chat about some of the tweets that have come through, the tweets that I've highlighted throughout the week. Uh, we'll talk about some of our ticks and crosses. Uh, I think there'll be a few things that we liked from coming from the game. Clearly a few things that we didn't like out of the game as well. Um, and uh, if I haven't said already, we'll cast our votes as well. We'll have a bit of a look ahead to next week too against the Carlton game. I think that's on a Thursday night, Anna, is that right? I think Thursday night, yeah. Uh, so we'll have a look at some of the recent history around that, uh, who we think might be some of the ins and outs. Clearly we might have a big out in Tom Stewart. We'll get to that. Um, and... Uh, a little thing that Anna's not ready for yet, and I haven't, I've caught her by surprise on this one, but I'm going to see if uh, she's happy to make the case as to why Geelong won't win uh, against Carlton. I'm going to take the opposite. So uh, there's a new little thing I'm going to... see. If, if Paul's not here today, but if Paul was here, I'd be flipping a coin and saying, one of you has to make a case for why Geelong wins and one of you has to make a case for why Geelong loses. So um, because Paul's not here today, and I'm going to handball that to you because <laughs> I like to be positive about my cats. Uh, but anyway, uh, and we'll finish off with a little bit of hoops trivia uh, from way back. Uh, we're playing Carlton. Uh, Tommy Hawkins debuted. Uh, his first game was against Carlton way, way back in 2007. Uh, so we'll have a little bit about uh, chat about that as well. All right, so let's kick the show off. Anna, first thoughts after, uh, did you get to the, go to the game first and foremost? Yep, I was there. It was really nice to have the uh, tribute to Joel Selwood, got to see him do his lap of honour. It was really great respect from Collingwood as well. Um, I guess we do have a bit of mod- modern day rivalry with them. So it was nice, at least at the start of the game, to have a bit of respect between both the sides. You, you know, no matter what you think of Joel Selwood, he's an absolute yeah. champion of the game. Yeah. So it was a nice start. Um, great game until about the last quarter, I guess. So I was always on edge, but... You know, round one, there's a lot to learn. And as we've said, last year we were five and four halfway through the season. So I'm not worried at all. It's hard. It's uh, you easily forget that we were five and four. And we, we don't always come out of the gates. Well, not in recent years anyway, with 10, 10, 10 and zero. Uh, usually it's something like two and two, three and three, something like that. But uh, I don't think there's, there's much to worry about just yet. And there was some, yeah, clearly the boys faded a little bit after three quarter time and, and full credit to Collingwood. Uh, they... Fully deserved the win. Uh, we just couldn't put them away. Couldn't, could not put them away. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Look, we'll, we'll come back next week, won't we? We'll have another crack at it, and we'll we'll go again. Um, what did you think about the six goals, sixteen goals won? That was uh, getting me a little bit excited there at one point. I thought, surely we can't lose this game. We were, I was partying with a few people I didn't know. I was uh, having a good old time. It was very impressive. Um, it was nice to see, especially with a side that very obviously wasn't at full strength even before the match started. I don't think Hawkins should have played at all. And I'm shocked, shocked yeah. Geelong made the decision to do that. I think yeah. it's very easy for everyone to get caught up in that round one start of the season hype and we're better than that as a club. So, um, you know, but what, what are we now sitting on the outer? So, yeah, unfortunately it was great. We kicked the 16 goals, but as we know, premierships are built on great defence and we conceded 19-11. That's 30 scoring yeah, shots, 125 lot. points. That's... You know, our last season average was something like 67. So I know that it's round one and obviously we, we were making these mistakes all up until the middle of last year. So there's not too much you can say, but there's very evident, evidently things we do need to change. Yeah, and I think if we if we had gone into that game knowing we weren't going to have Tom Stewart, we probably would have uh, done some structuring up at the selection table and maybe pick some things but we would just make moving pieces during the during the play and it just didn't work and everyone was out of every it felt like everyone was out of position it felt like we had none of those defense none of those structures were working everyone just 
kind of looked a bit lost, to be honest. That was just the feel I got. And, and again, I don't know what was going on, but clearly a few players were hobbling. Everyone was sort of filling in for someone else. And we just looked like, we looked tired. And I was like, are we, are we, because the question's coming through loud and clear on Twitter, is Geelong unfit? Now, I don't necessarily think we've seen enough of a sample size to say that yet, but I think we were, we were working so hard to fix the holes that it made us look like we were really tired. I mean, that was my read on it, sitting there watching it at the game, that we're just spending all this unnecessary energy. And then when it, yeah, we were just lost. I don't know. That's the way well, I Well, I just it. think as well, Collingwood look, oh, I mean, again, Port, Port Adelaide looked phenomenal. Brisbane looked terrible. But I'm fully expecting Brisbane to be right up there in the top four again, top eight minimum, yeah. right? So I don't read much into that game and I don't think many should read much into this. But Collingwood looks super fit. They had a bit more time off than us. They have a lot of revenge considering they had these <laughs> really close losses. Yep. Um, so that's fine. If they if they yeah. want to if they're on their path, we know that at this stage they're the benchmark. Um, and if that's what we have to reach and exceed, we know how to do it. So, well, I think the, the round one it. benchmark, Anna. Uh, good good luck to them. Uh, uh, I'm happy for them. Very very happy for them. Now you did mention us. Uh, we we. Our defenders uh, had to put up with 30, 30 scoring shots, or Collingwood kicked uh, thirteen, th- had 30, 30 scoring shots. Um, I thought Asava was pretty good considering uh, the amount of ball coming into the defensive 50 and a few of those other four, uh, defenders as well. I, I don't think... It just felt like it was the midfield just uh, and probably the holes in defence that were sort of letting down the defensive. So, I mean, everything didn't look great. Uh, I mean, at parts of the game, it looked fantastic, um, but that final quarter we were just shaking our heads like I don't know do you, do, how did you find Asava's game I know there's a lot of love for Asava out there did you think without giving away your votes or anything but did you think he played reasonably well or were you like oh my god we've got to send him forward again or we're going to drop him as well so like um, it was a bit of a mix no. out there yeah no Asa, um, I think as well one key point we need to realize to know when Hawkins is injured is that he was not making that effort to run up the ground. He couldn't do it. That's when right. we, we've always had, every team has to fill holes. Naturally injuries happen during the season, during games, whatever. Hawkins was not making that effort. He was unsighted and that is unlike him and that is not the Geelong way. So I know that he wasn't fully fit. That's right. Anyway, I digress. I thought Asava was fantastic. I think we need to keep in perspective. He's still young. Um, there's obviously, there's a very clear reason we have not traded him. Um, I mean, look at someone like a Hawkins and it took him years to come Mm. into his, uh, come into his own 2011 grand final. And he was on our list for five years before he truly, truly became the standalone forward. And then even now he's learning everything new with Rowan and Cameron. So you see that with the defender, you see that with any tall player. I thought he was fantastic considering the pressure we were under and, um, yeah, 30 scoring shots. You could see that obviously at halftime he was told, um, you know, spoil. That was one thing I noticed. Exactly. We were talking about the same thing. Yeah. It's like he's still trying to clunk it like he's a forward or, or playing centre half yeah. forward. Like, but, mate, you just got to yeah. nullify it. Um, and he really, he looked comfortable because he hasn't played that much, especially not on the big stage with this huge club who are very loud, vicious. You can feel the ground shaking, no, mm. like whatever decisions made. So, He absorbed the pressure. We didn't absorb all the pressure. But again, we kicked 103 points. We weren't terrible, right? So Collingwood are all fantastic. That's great. They beat us in the end, but they still let us kick 16, whatever, how many goals. So something went wrong for them just as much as something went wrong for us. So I'm sticking with Asava because at the moment without Henry in and we don't know how long with his um, foot injury that's going to be. Now we don't know what's going on with Stewart. And we don't want to have to rely on Blicks every single week to give up his position around the ground to go into defence, which I do think we'll get to it. But I think Blicks will go naturally yeah. down back to the ground too. But yeah, you rob Peter to pay Paul, don't you? It's um, he's so effective as that sort of tall mid that mm. just it's hard it's hard to hard to put a match up on him um, mm. and to sacrifice that to cover those defensive holes. Will you? you what worked for us last year, you're giving that up as well. It's, uh, I don't know what the answers are, but it's going to be an interesting week for the coaches, that's for sure. And I am glad you pointed out that thing about um, Asava trying to clunk those marks. He looks so much better in the second half. Even in that fourth quarter, he was it was coming in and he was doing his best. And um, and look, I thought Guthrie was pretty good too. I mean, all, I think a lot of those guys did pretty well. It just was getting in there so much. I don't think any team could have could have done much. Any any defensive outfit could have done any better, really. Um, 
maybe Melbourne possibly, but uh, it was round one. We've got to remember that, don't we, Anna? It's round one. Let's not lose our crap. Now, I want to ask you, this is a, this is a, a tick and a cross together. A, a tick, I loved it when the Cats crowd were cheering Ollie Henry uh, every time he got the ball. Was the, I don't know if you could hear the Ollie chant going up or uh, that was pretty loud where, where I was, uh, but the cross is the, the Collingwood. I mean, you knew the Collingwood fans were going to come hard at him and, and geez, they came hard when it came hard when he got tackled in that goal square, didn't they? But uh, uh, I don't, did we expect any different from them? I don't know. I guess no, not every but... single Collingwood fan is like that. I should point that out if you are watching. But um, we, uh, did... I, we, we, we should have expected better from Ollie, but we should also realise that's not the Geelong way. I look at someone like a Josh Caddy who never really fit in, and I'm not saying I think Ollie Henry is miles better than Josh Caddy ever was. Um, but he just, he was always, I talked about it with my dad. He was playing, Ollie was playing to the crowd, not for the crowd. We, As Geelong, we play for our club. We play for our community. We play for our people. And you do that by just playing good football. We don't go and give it to me in the crowd. I'd just rather see my team win and do it in a humble way. We've always been humble champions. Mm. He will learn. You will. He'll um, learn the Geelong way. It's not, he's absolutely. still got a bit of the Collingwood in him. We'll, we'll get that out of you, man. Don't worry about that. Yeah. So I think, and I guess touching on that with Tanner um, Brune as well, he was obviously not cocky, but he looked very lost. He yeah. will, that's, he's come from a football program that isn't built on a lot of history, a lot of tr- tradition and champions, the way that you come into our club and you are expected to go up a notch. Yeah. Um, you look at great clubs, I assume Collingwood goes up a notch at the moment. They're on a really good path. You look at Sydney, that Bloods culture is unmatched. We have the Geelong way. And when you come down the highway, you stand a little taller. You mm-hmm. do you do things for not just your teammates, you do things for your club because we, we are unique in the way that we, you know, are the regional club. We have our own ground. We have our own fans. We play a different brand of football. And that makes me proud to be a supporter because I'm not a supporter who gloats and I'm not a supporter who gives it to people. And, you know, it's pro- it's very heartbreaking when I hear from someone I haven't heard from 10 years ago, mm. rub it in my face. I'm like, I didn't even know you went to yeah. Collingwood or whoever. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to support my team no matter what. Exactly. So, yeah, Ollie will learn. He'll learn. And- he will learn. And, he- yeah. and-, and he's got that first game un- out of the way now. Uh, there's so many emotions. And I... Oh. I'm a little bit older than you. I think, I think what's Ollie about early twenties as well, or something like that. It must. He hasn't played much games of AFL footy yet, and so and playing against your old mob in front of nearly ninety thousand people, I would be an emotional roller coaster as well. So I think he'll take a little while. I think we we go easy on Tanner Brew, and I think he'll we'll see some flashes of brilliance from him. But I don't fully expect him to really adjust to the Geelong way uh, for until next year. Really, I think we'll see him probably being somewhat a regular in the side. But I don't. I think we'll see them. We'll see uh, A grade Tanner Bruin probably next year is, is probably where I'm looking at. Did you mm-hmm. did you get a good look at the Salwood Lap of Honour? Um, we're jumping around a little bit here, but um, did you ha- did you get to see Joel uh, and little Joey? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, our seats were um we we're in the AFL members and we were right where he's actually coming out, so we got some oh, nice. great footage and he was talking to us all. It was just you know you feel like a kid and I'm with my dad and my uncle and auntie who are yeah. you know well well older than me and. You know, everybody's standing there looking at this guy who has brought so many generations so much joy, right? I The 2022 grand final for so many from younger than me to people in their 80s and 90s because of what he has built, you know, how can you not, how can you not love the bloke? He's so nice. He is always switched on for the people. He yeah. doesn't even play for us anymore. He doesn't no, have to be, no. but... He, he always will give. He's always given the respect that we've given him. It's very easy when you have a player that you see really cares. You just give it right back. I mean, he was. He did the walk from uh, Fed Square as well with the. I think he had. Who, the who does that? Who right? does that kind of stuff? And he, can, he. I mean, everyone wanted a piece of him, and I kind of felt a bit uncomfortable for him a little bit, to be honest. Like he's still. A, he's just a guy at the end of the day, and imagine having hundreds and hundreds of people wanting wanting their five seconds with you. Uh, but, yeah, he did it. I mean, he probably knew that was going to happen and, and still did it anyway. And uh, he knew he was probably going to cop a couple of boos uh, going around the crowd. I didn't, I didn't actually hear any. I, I just heard cheering from where I was. So The I'm, only time he got booed was when they actually showed him on screen during the game. Oh, so. uh, okay. Oh, well. You know, they've always said, don't shame on you yeah. for being champion, but they're happy to give it back. But anyway. Yeah. Um, Look, 
I like to think we're probably not perfect as well as Geelong supporters, yeah, but no. I think we we when our legends go elsewhere, like G Ablett, uh, we we tend to. I always cheer for him when he gets that goal. We line, still cheer for them. So I, got uh, up, I was like, so yeah. yeah no. I must admit, I, guess, I, I didn't boo Josh Caddy, but I wasn't happy with him when he left. I felt like, mate, what are you doing? And then he won all those premierships, but uh, what are you gonna do? You know. Yeah. As long as you, as I feel like we're pretty lucky in this era, especially me, as I say, I'm 22. I can't complain. You know, if Flay mm. wants to move on, I know my team's still going to compete without them. So yeah. it's it's it's, a, so. it's an okay thing. I think so. Mm. And then Joel's Joel's legacy will legacy will last for a long, long time. Um, it's, you speak of the Geelong way. I was really pleased. I mean, the way we play footy is really impressive, but I think the way we carry ourselves and um, and how we how we responded to Jeremy Howe going down. I saw a few of the players went, go over to him and. Um, you know, go 50 metres out of the way to go over to him. I think uh, Isaac Smith, uh, Jezza might have gone up to him. I'm probably missing a few others as well. So um, I thought that was quite nice. Um, I mean, you'd expect that from Geelong, I suppose, at this point, wouldn't you, really? Like, you wouldn't expect anything less. And there was nothing untoward in the incident. It was just two guys going, Stengel and Jeremy Howe going hard at it. And <laughs> these things happen in footy, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't even see the incident. I saw Stengel going back, but I had a bit kind of a one eye for Stengel more than anything. I didn't even realise that Jeremy Howe was hurt until a little while later. So hopefully he makes a quick recovery and gets back out there because I think the AFL loves Jeremy Howe and um, he takes a good hanger, doesn't he? He does. He sure does. Now, Tui got off to a good start on some Pat's day. I was very happy with Tui uh, early doors and he was he was having a bit of fun as well. Um, got a couple of those goals early. Uh, and I thought both the Irish guys were reasonably good as well, so I think uh, they were they were fantastic. And uh, and I, one of my favourites, uh, and I think I've gone I've gone on record saying I think this bloke's going to win the Brownlow this year. I thought Max Holmes was was pretty good throughout the day as well. Uh, like all the players, there was moments where he faded out of the game, but I think pretty much everyone on the list, unless you're a defender, you didn't have a choice really. Um, but I just uh, think it was I think a really key point to kind of look at is we conceded 10 red time goals oh that was um, oh my goodness me that was frustrating we we just looked tired at the end of those quarters and I don't know if that's you know we're still getting back into the mojo of things but I we we the same thing happened we played Hawthorne on Easter Monday last year we just mm. faded away in that last yeah. quarter and we faded away at the end of you know we get a really handy lead and then all of a sudden one or two late goals trickle in at the end of every quarter yeah and at the end that's what's going to cost you a game so it's deflating. Um, it's just deflating. It was, <laughs> and I think what, what made it even more difficult was that our clearance work was pretty poor. Yeah. So when we were on, Collingwood were even more on. So it wasn't like every time we'd get away that Collingwood would, would be down and out. They'd very quickly fight back. Yeah. The Dacos boys were absolutely oh, killer. Nuts. And I don't know how we let them. Two players sat behind every single contest for the entire night. Yeah. And their setup was so easy to see. Their game plan was very easy to see. They never went down the middle. It was always down the side. And they'd have two or three guys. It felt like we were playing Chasey. It felt like there were 15 of us and 25 of them. It did, didn't so, it? Oh, meant, everyone's, everyone around me was saying, oh, just man up. And I know it's not that simple because everyone's playing out of position and it's round one and you're still fit. And there's, you've got a bunch of new teammates that you've never played with before bar a practice match or two. But yeah, everyone just Collingwood just seemed to have so much space and credit and credit to them they they were just so predictable to each other and they were they were moving and they were spreading and it was um if you're a Collingwood fan you'd be loving what you're seeing uh, and it is round one and you wouldn't want to get too carried away but and there'll be different styles of footy that you're going to come up against throughout the year the other teams will see what Collingwood have done and try and figure out how to stop that and you've just got to keep evolving as a footy club all throughout the year and and the best ones will still be there at the end and. And, and hard to beat. Uh, if you're not so good, if you're a one-trick pony, you get found out. That's just the way AFL goes throughout, what, 24-round 24, 24 season? 23 games at least anyway now, yeah, so it's tough. Uh, I thought Reece Stanley was pretty good in the first uh, part of the game. He, he had 12 hit-outs in the first quarter. I thought, geez, Reece is having a good one here. And he had that little premier, premiership Ruckman strut going, which I really liked. I don't know if he's done the strut before, but he was strutting away. Uh, Reece is pretty reserved normally, but... Uh, um, I liked a little bit of pep in the step there. That was great. Um, Tom Atkins, I didn't notice too much in the first half, but he really came alive in that in the second half. So I, I got a lot of respect for that. When the chips were down, he just kept going and going and going, um, whereas some of the other boys were fading. One of the difficult things with Atkins is that his speed isn't his strong suit, mm-hmm. um, which many teams found out last year, but he became that clearance bull. He became the, you know, 
under player who just could keep his feet and get the ball out. Didn't have to be quick, but he was he was big enough and skillful enough to move it. And he, as much as he had a, he was he was all right. I mean, we didn't win, so it was hard to. And especially with our midfield losing um, a lot of the footy. I just looked at that and I was like, you got found out, unfortunately, because how quick, crisp, Jack Crisp is get, taking clearances, who's double his size, yeah. but looked a lot fitter. Yeah. And when obviously speed isn't your strength, you're going to be found out a lot quicker. Those Dacos brothers could run 20 laps of the G without breaking a sweat. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's hard when the game of football is from that Bulldogs 2016 play on at all costs really it was ugly let's be completely honest it's ugly play on at all costs kick the ball on tap it forward you know rugby like yeah. football That's Richmond frenetic. adapted that and now Collingwood are playing that and look it, it's working it's it worked for them to make it all the way to a prelim and only lose by a point last year so who's said they can't go one more yeah well um they they look at they're showing all the right signs at the moment. And I think just the final point on Tom Atkins, I think he's he tends. I think he probably comes into the game a bit more when the speed of the game slows down a bit. So it, uh, so when you know late in quarters, second halves, I think we'll see a lot more from him. Brian Myers is and he's just constant throughout the whole game. So he's a slow he's a slow builder as well. Um, so there's a few positives to take out of the game. I think Isaac Smith's getting better with age. He's a fine wine. He's almost had two best on grounds, really. Uh, close to it anyway. Um, I mean, you, people might say Paddy was the best on grand final day, but Isaac Smith's had some pretty good games lately, uh, if you back end it there. So uh, now, a couple of the downsides, a couple of the crosses that I that I sort of thought about was clearly we, we have to talk about Tom Stewart. This is the big one. And uh, um, I don't know. I, when I saw it, I saw it straight away, and I know the... I think Geelong was streaming forward at that point and maybe it wasn't picked up by everyone, but I thought, oh no, he's, he's grabbed for the knee. This is curtains. Uh, what do you, what, what's the latest? What have you heard? What's the latest uh, time frame for him to get back or do we not know I, yet? Nothing's been said, obviously, mm. you know, we're heading to a weekend. So he, yeah. he would have had scans, but Geelong won't, probably won't say, will not say anything till Monday, even Tuesday. Mm. Mm. Um, Chris Scott seemed hopeful in his press conference saying it could be, one week could be anything, but, you know, in my head I'm bracing for a big chunk without him, which is just devastating. I think the way Chris Scott spoke about, because obviously Stuart wasn't the only only injury we had on the night, I think the way Scott spoke about the ground and things in such a way that was he, – he's, he's very good at speaking. He's, yeah. I, I really admire his football brain. I admire the way he can navigate the media. Um, but it is something – if we won that game, I know he would have said the exact same thing about the state of the ground. And that's a player's, that's a workplace. You know, if your workplace isn't safe, you're going to say something. So if that costs him time off um, where he can't be doing his job, that's a massive, massive point. That's a massive issue. And people can go, oh, nothing happened in the Carlton Richmond game, but you were there at the ground. I was there at the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, you could see it on the television. That was not AFL standard. That was not up to standard. No, and that, if that's going to – you saw – what it's by himself. It was just – it was devastating. And that's the worst way you can go down an injury when you haven't done anything wrong. You haven't put yourself it's in cruel. a dangerous way. Yeah. You haven't competed on a body. You haven't gone for a stupid mark and it just happened. It's just – it's it's devastating. In the first quarter of the first game of the year. Uh, oh, yeah. When, when, I, when I hear a coach say we're hopeful – I read that as it could be anywhere from a couple of weeks to 12 weeks. Um, hopeful to me means he probably won't be out for the whole year. It doesn't sound like a season-ending injury, um, but half a season, it, it really does uh, do something to your list uh, over the course of a whole season, really, and then you know, you've got to find your way back into the, in the team. So, look, hopefully the, everything I'm hearing is that they're relatively feeling positive about uh, that it won't be, uh, won't be a half a season type of thing. I don't know anything more than that, but and I don't think really anyone will um, until he gets a few weeks of rehab or whatever it is, not rehab, but some um, treatment into his into his knee. Um, the Connings are the other one that was a bit of a concern there. He went off and thinking, what is going We've lost, we're losing all our absolute stars. Uh, and once they all came back on as well, it was just yeah. they were not themselves naturally. So it's like, maybe don't go too hard because we, we just want to see, we don't want you to, come out at 100% because, you know, we're still I'm on an iron about whether you should even go out there, really. Uh, and then it, I think Tyson Stengel went down at one point and came back on and 
I think even Isaac Smith was wringing his arm. Like he had got a wrist or something at, at some stage. We were copping it here, there, and everywhere. It was it wasn't great. Um, and the surface, yeah, I, it looked good. It looked good on TV, and it looked good at the ground. Um, but mm, I don't know. And I was thinking, is it the shoes? No, no, it's not the shoes. Everyone's slipping. I could out. I could see the big patches, and you could see huge chunks. Naturally, mm. the ground gets dug up, but not in the way it looked like it was shifting under their feet. Yeah. I was watching players go for a run straight up the wing on the AFL member side and slip. And I'm like, Isaac Quainor slipped like four or five times in front of us, which was off camera. And I'm like, you're running a straight line and you're you're not a clumsy player. You're not doing anything out of the ordinary. So I just want to say one point I think about Stuart, and I think we can probably touch on this when we go into like talking about the yeah, upcoming sure. game. But sure, sure. Um, when we lost him due to the suspension last year, it was – Four, six weeks? Yes, four weeks, I think it was. Four weeks. Yep. And in 2021, we lost him to that long-term injury. And I looked at the comparison as we lost most of those games during 2021 without Stewart, and we lost none of them without him last year. Mm. So the way when he went down, and I get it, it was different to him. You know, we're, we know he's getting suspended. We can plan around this. He went down in the middle of the game. But we looked panicked without him. Oh. And that is so Angelong like. And I'm not just saying that because we won a flag. Even before that was Angelong like. But that was very 2021 esque of us. In a way, we we looked, you know, we looked frightened. And that's just unfortunately the way the game goes. And it gave me great comfort last year, even before we were close to like being in the grand final and winning it, knowing that we could win without him. Because at the end of the day, your stars go down, you look at danger, and he looked. He looked good, but mm. it looks like he was trying to put the team on his back again yeah. and he had a very narrow vision. And I, I I, figured, I mean, you know, end of the season means you have to start again, but the way he was alleviated of a lot of that pressure of just put the team on your back, get this quarter done, we didn't lift as a team. And, and when he narrows his eyes, he doesn't look for the options. The options actually weren't there, to be honest. We weren't playing in front all night. So... I don't want to fall back into those habits. I mean, there's a lot less pressure on us because we've won, we've broken through, we've won the flag, but this team is capable of more. So yeah, we, we want them to be hungry. We do, we do. I guess the, the, the real test starts next week uh, and we'll, we'll get to the couple of games soon, but can we win without Tom Stewart two years in a row? Uh, I, I'm, I'm confident that the, we've got some really good coaches um, and some excellent senior players that will know what to do in this situation. Um, not, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a tricky one. Uh, Carlton's going to be reasonably good. They didn't get the win the other day, but I think uh, there'll be a pretty big test uh, next Thursday night as well. Um, it was, I guess, a positive I touched on before was we kicked 16 goals, one uh, through three quarters. Uh, and then, yeah, the last six shots on goal were behinds. So I was, that was a bit deflating as well. I thought, this is great. We're going to, we're not going to miss a shot. And I think the only shot we missed was a poster for Jeremy Cameron, I think, from memory. Uh, we just couldn't miss. Um, but, yeah, to finish the way we did, uh, Collingwood just ran over the top. And then, we, you know, we might have stayed in the game a little bit more, maybe even pinched it if a couple of those behinds went through. Before you know it, it's, you know, probably going back the other end. Uh, Collingwood's scoring a goal and maybe they're under a bit more pressure. But it was party time for them in that fourth quarter. So a goal here, a goal there can change a few things. But, you know, it's in the past. What can you do? You can't do much about it. Um, but it, it is hard as a premier, premiership team to to watch your team go out there and concede the last eight goals of the game. That's, yeah, that hurt a little bit considering we felt like we probably had this one wrapped up at, at a few points through the game, actually. We were th- uh, 20 points up or thereabouts uh, on three occasions and credit to Collingwood, uh, they didn't give it up, uh, you know. Uh, I, there is one cross and I want to get your opinion on this, Anna. Um, I was on the opposite side of the MCC and... Uh, there was a moment where Reece Stanley, the ball was floating towards him and he tried to punch it into the forward line. Umpire said, that's delivered out of bounds. Um, what's your opinion on that one? I think the rule is the stupidest thing. It is, there was another, um, yeah, I think that was the incident. No, it was a Collingwood one where mm-hmm. it came from a kick out and they punched it and that in the rule, unless they've changed it, mm. if it's come straight from a kick out and it's punched out, isn't uh, deliberate. I, okay. I'm not sure if that rule's changed. And look, it's so confusing these yeah, days. I, know, I, know. I just think the rule is pathetic. Dangerfield had one where you know we're going forward and he just 
is going in the wrong direction to the handball to just trickle out and you're going to call it. And every time they called a Collingwood one f- to walk for Geelong, I, I shake my head. I'm, I'm a pretty, um, I can watch the game and I'm not a one-eyed supporter. I, I appreciate the game and I can see it from Collingwood's side as well. And I can see from any team side, the deliberate rule ruins the nature oh. of the game. There yeah. are times when, you know, yeah, that's absolutely deliberate, but, Technically, every time the ball trickles out, it's deliberate, right? Yeah. If it's come off someone's hand or yep. if someone's walked it over the line or done, you know, boundaries always your friend, that should be a deliberate call. I think the call should be out of the game. I, I just find it really difficult and it just is, it's just, it's toxic to the game. Yeah. We love the way AFL is free flowing and easy to watch. And, and it was free flowing without the umpires were barely exactly. sighted in that exactly. first first quarter or first two quarters really and then all of a sudden they just started to put their stamp on the game and the, and the other thing I noticed is they started paying these silly free kicks and all of a sudden similar free kicks they weren't paying it was like okay so we've clearly we've realized oh we made a mistake there we better not keep doing that but I was like it's it just got a really frustrating because then it became really inconsistent in terms of how they were applying the rules and uh, anyway, I don't. That's definitely not the reason why we lost. Uh, it was one incident or a couple of incidents like that. Um, and Collingwood, again, I've said this three times now, fully deserved the win. Um, but yeah, that was really that really annoyed me in that moment with that Reese. I actually thought he did a really good thing, strongly trying to get it back into the fifty meters and not take possession. Uh, just do the simple things well, Reese. That's what we want you to do. And and he got penalised for it. And I thought, gee, Matt, poor bugger. <laughs> I mean, he's he's playing really well. Um, all right, the MCG turf, we've talked about that. Uh, Hawkins, you mentioned, yeah, I thought he looked really slow, really, really slow. He still he still had a lot of good forward craft. Uh, one moment there where he, he took a mark on a lead where he sort of moved his body one way and at the last minute came back just to sort of protect that space. It's like, oh, Tom Hawkins, he could do that. Uh, he, he's just fantastic the way he does that stuff. Um, I didn't like, and I hope you weren't one of these people, Anna, I didn't like people leaving the ground uh, with 15 minutes to go when we were a couple of goals down because they thought they'd seen enough. This, this Geelong's conceded six goals. Oh, no, come on. We've just won a premiership five and a half months ago or whatever it was. Uh, you can't let... Uh, anyway, I know people... I understand in some instances um, my dad never let me go to watch Collingwood or Hawthorne games when I was a kid because of... Um... Oh. The abuse. And we're very fair. Like we yes. are very fair supporters. We yeah. we don't abuse. We don't boo. I think booing's mm-hmm. one of the most disgusting things in the game. These are human beings. Relax. Yeah. yeah, it's a game of footy. We're lucky that we can sit here in a free country and watch footy, no matter your gender, your age, your size, yep. where you're from. Like we can sit and freely support a game, a game sport. Um, it's a game, people. Goodness. Yeah. So no, I've always been taught. And I've been very lucky because I've seen many more wins than I have seen losses. So you support the players in the rain, hail or shine to the end. And as much as, of course, I was, I was more wanting, and we didn't, we left on the siren as siren, we got up and left, but it's more because you'll cop abuse no matter what you do. It's more, I don't want to sit on the train with these guys. And it's, and it's just part of what you do, but yeah, you got, you got to get through and support. And at the end of the day, you know, I went home and, kissed my little premiership cup and went to bed, right? So, you know what I mean? We need to see that premiership cup on camera one day, by the way. It's not within um, arm's reach or anything. <laughs> Dad wants to take it down to Kid in your park in round six. And, oh, oh, very um, nice. I'll give it to everyone for photos, which I think is hilarious. I think it's so. a, is it the full replica size or is that like 30 centimetre version of well, it? We've got, all, we've got all the four um, little ones uh-huh. sit under the TV. Oh, nice yeah, yeah. Nice I think I've seen a photo of that, yeah. Yeah, so that was that was given. We'd get that straight away, and then actually got it as a Christmas present. It was a complete surprise. They wow. got me the um, full size one, which I thought was hilarious. But it was a hoot at Christmas because um, got a, long, a lot of Geelong supporters, a lot of Carlton supporters in the family. So it was actually really fun. And it's the same weight. It's three quarter size, but the same wow. weight as the membership cup. Wow. And I've luckily held all four. So wow. I mean, it sits, it sits under the TV. I don't know where I'm going to put it when I eventually move out. But <laughs> it'll, it'll be with me wherever I go. And I guess if we win more, I'm going to be getting more big cups, I guess. <laughs> under, the, under the pillow. I've got to get, I want to get a little one for somewhere behind me here on the on the shelf. I think that might They're be. They're classy. Where yeah, is it? Yeah, that's right. It's classy. It's classy. You've got to. I don't know if I can afford four of them. I think the, I'm looking at the $300 versions, but uh, maybe maybe just the 2022 one or well, I don't know. I've been to two grand finals. Maybe I should get the ones from the two grand finals that I've been at. So. I don't know. Um, all right, so I'll 
couple more crosses before we move on to some uh, tweets of the week and things like that. Um, Parfit came on at the sub, but really, really struggled. And I don't really want to pop players too much, but I think um, uh, he might... Yeah, I think he'll keep his spot on the side, but I just... Yeah, he didn't really get a lot of the ball through the night, through three quarters. So so that was a little bit of a worry. And a couple of players just seemed uncharacteristically off. Uh, Brad Close, I think you know. Paul definitely knows. Brad's my number one. Uh, he didn't look his normal self. Um, seemed a bit, yeah, uh, fumbly at times, which, which you don't see. Um, and uh, the hairless Cam Guthrie, just... Uh, I know it's going to take a while to grow that hair back. I'm oh, superstitious now. Um, he he didn't have his best game either. But again, round one, they'll probably come out next week and uh, be best on ground. Who knows? Uh, so I don't want to go too early on these things. But uh, but I don't, I don't imagine we'll be making wholesale changes as well. Clearly, the the Stewart one we'll, we'll need to have a look at, and hopefully, De Conning um, looks after his body through the week and he's he's right to go. Um, and it may be just uh, you know we had a VFL practice game. Um, not sure how. Or a few of the, I think the boys just fell short in that one. Um, I'm not sure if we've got a an obvious replacement for a Tom. St- well, clearly, no one that's up to his standard, but um, you know, a, a key defensive role or sort of even a wingman role really now that Stewart's in. It might be. I feel like it's more moving the pieces on the chessboard than anything else, probably for next week. Um, but yeah, and uh, I don't know. I just. Uh, yeah, it was just an uncharacteristic night, but uh, I think if we just focus on the negatives, and I'd like to start with the positives like we did, because I think more, there's more that came... The fact that we still kicked 100 points, which I think you said, and uh, you know, it's probably more that we conceded 125. That was maybe the issue, but I think we're going to be okay moving forward. Uh, we just I need- think the important thing is that we can see where the issues were. We're yeah, not sitting here right. scratching our heads going, what went wrong, yeah, right? right? It wasn't like we got blown out by 100 points and we had injuries. That's not to blame, but you could just see that a few things need to tweak. And as we said, it took us till round nine last year to get the... And then even then we were, you know, some games were just scraping by. So you never yeah. know. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at some tweets of the week, Anna. So a first tweet this week comes from Adrian Mancini. And Adrian says... No legs in the last quarter. Haven't seen that for a while. New guys looked good. Th- thumbs up. Momentum shifted more than the MCG turf. Regroup and come back. Go Cats. Thanks, Adrian. Yeah, I think we, we touched on a few of those points for either surface, and uh, it's nice to see a, a positive tweet there from Adrian. I think uh, I think the boys will... We play reasonably well, um, and we're back on the MCG again, aren't we? And I think we're at the MCG again Thursday, so um, we shall see. Now, second tweet comes from Chris. Uh, 103 win, 103 wins more games than it loses. Sadly, when your top two defenders are injured in the game, your third tall is in concussion protocol, and the fourth defending tall is on L plates at some point. The damn wall is going to break. We didn't even talk about Jack Henry, but yeah, uh, Chris, 100 percent, mate. Uh, yeah, what, what can you say, Anna? What do you? <laughs> pretty much. We've lost almost a whole defensive team, really. Uh, I also think, yeah, it was hard without Kola Jasny. I think oh. I know a lot of people give him a bit of slack, but I've seen he knows how to play the game. Yeah. He's a, he's now a premiership defender. We can't actually not, – no one can deny that, which is – He's always going to be a premiership defender now. Absolutely, right? So it's nice. it's nice to know that, as I said, we can see where we can fill these holes. And I think, as you said, we're going to move the chess pieces – for Carlton, I mean, in my head, I've at least figured out what I, what I would do or what we can do, I guess. So, yeah, no, I'm, so I'm okay. Hold your yeah. fire on that one because we'll cover that when we talk about the Carlton game <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> All right, who we got next? Uh, Dylan Tricky. D- Dylan says going to going to take every team's best shot this year. A lot to like and a lot to build on. Yeah, like we're the hunted now, aren't we? Uh, we probably weren't really considered much of a threat after getting smashed by Melbourne in a prelim a few years ago. But uh, but yeah, this year I think everyone wants a piece of the cats again. Uh, it's going to be tough. I don't know. How do you think we're going to hold up to that pressure every week? And are we going to we're going to? I don't. I think I don't think we're going to fold. I think we'll enjoy it. I think we've always had a bit of pressure, and I think we naturally put pressure on ourselves, even in that eleven year period where we were building to win last year's flag. But um, I think something we really have to get our heads around now is we were hunting Melbourne last year and we based a game to beat Melbourne, which we did. We didn't get to meet them in the finals. I'm sure we would have got through if we did. We built a game to beat Richmond, which we ended up beating them with. So obviously teams have been sitting there, you know, Collingwood's done it already. They've figured out 
they did to us what we did to them in the qualifying and round three. They ran rings physically, were fitter, hungrier, and that's okay. It's round one. But, you know, the way we looked at that Max Holmes run that got the goal in the end of the qualifying to give us the win was what they were doing to us um, two nights ago. So that's okay. We've always had a bit of pressure, but I think it's very different because a lot of the media, as we kept losing prelims and finals, kept writing us off and no one had us in their top eight last year. No. no one no one had us anywhere, but this year everyone's like, yep, Geelong top four. So there is this underlying feeling that we haven't had since 2011, and that's okay. That's we've fun. always been... We've always been up there, so we're always talked about anyway. I reckon we do what we did last year and just, uh, what, four and five, five and four to start of the year. Everyone stops talking about the Cats. And guessing, right? Everyone's yeah. all focusing on the, the Melbourne and Port or whoever whoever's flying at that point in time. Uh, now, our fourth tweet comes from Maddie, and Maddie says, Ed Sheeran should sleep with one eye open. <laughs> are we blaming Ed Sheeran? Are we, who are we, are we, bl- we can't blame the AFL. I think we've got to blame the MCC, don't we? Uh, no, look, the surface, I don't know. I had concerns about it. Paul was very, very confident the surface would be fine um, when we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. But uh, no, very funny there, Matty. I, I think I think Ed Sheeran will be fine. <laughs> I don't think he'll worry too much about it. But um, but yeah, man, my favourite final final tweet and my favourite one this week comes from uh, uh, Hickey. Uh, Pies fans crying about 20-year-old Jack Ginnivan whose behaviour is actually appalling, being trolled. But I think that's okay to troll a 20-year-old Ollie Henry because he doesn't want to be part of the gross black and white army. Typical. Yeah, look, we do have to remember these these guys are 20-year-olds or thereabouts and, or even teenagers in some case. And um, I don't know. Or probably, anyone. Anyone, anyone really. Anyone really. Like, it's just it's not necessary, like, whether it's a footy player or, uh, I mean, you're a female, and I'm, I'm assuming you cop a little bit online from time to I mean, it's just disgusting. Like, do you... It's, it's can, really, we, can we be better than that, really, people? Like, oh, I, can, it's just, it's not, the, as I said before, it's a game of footy. I got some, I got a DM this week. Um, I don't know, I think I sent it to you guys uh, from somebody mm. who I'd never heard of before, yep. literally just abusing me because obviously, you know, there's no one, there's no one better to, right? Because I'm, I am the, I am the coach of Geelong, as we know. <laughs> yep. So I've, I've, I've told the boys, yep. they know exactly. But I just, it's just, you know, it's scary when you're sitting at the ground and these people are getting up around you and if they could, they would jump the fence, you know? Yeah. That's when I just go, when I have kids, am I going to be bringing my, my – I, I, I know my dad did the right thing for me as a child. Um, and even now, as my dad gets older and I am and I get older, I feel like, oh my God, he he's going to be old and I don't want to – you know, I'm a, I'm a girl, yeah. I don't want to – have to protect my dad but it feels like that these days so it's a sad it's a sad state of affair because at the end of the day as I said we're so lucky footy we are so lucky and these players know how lucky they are no matter what team they're from they know that they're living a lot of people's dreams and we all get to go to the footy every week get to walk in the street wearing our team's colors and not be physically attacked or you'd hope not so we just, I think people need a bit of perspective. And I think where I work, there's a lot of perspective. So yeah. in the world, in the AFL world. So it's, it's, and I've been, I guess I've been raised in that way as well as you just, you celebrate your team's wins and you congratulate when the other team beats you. So nothing wrong with it. Just, I think, yeah. sorry, Anna, you go. No, I was just, I just wish more people would um, oh. not be one eyed. You can love your team. And I love Geelong till the day I die with a, undying passion but i can always see the game from many perspectives yeah i think we just got to all remember that um just treat people whether they're footy players or not um treat them with a bit of respect and they've got families and partners and some of them have got little kids that if they're a bit older that might be watching and oh, why is dad copping all this or why is mum in the aflw copping all this abuse it's um i guess footy for a lot of people is an, is an outlet to vent on the weekend and um, but nowhere to draw the line is probably what I'd say to that. Um, yeah. Moving on, Anna, let's let's cast some votes. Um, now, I found it a little hard to do my votes this week. Um, there was uh, there was some good players, but um, not clear standouts for me. And I think the way we've all voted was interesting. Um, do you want to? Do you have yours? In fr- I do have yours in case you don't have them in front of me. But uh, I've got them in my head. In your head, very good. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I went with um, Zach Guthrie for the three. Yep. Um, Sav Radagalia for two and Isaac Smith for one. I didn't really get to talk about Zach Guthrie before, no. but I'll just touch on him quickly. Good. I thought his game was really good. Yeah. I, 
he he has become such an integral part of our side since the start of last year and the way that the whole team had to navigate towards winning a flag yeah. that he now he was phenomenal on the weekend he he had a few issues but I look at him and I went yeah that you you should hold not that everyone should hang their heads in shame but you should be very proud of the effort you put in tonight mm-hmm. you were playing in front you kept on your man you did the job when most of the defense was depleted and He's come into his own physically and he's got a confidence and, you know, maybe that's because he's got a premiership yeah. medal around his neck, but he that confidence was building last year as well. And to see it not be wavered during this game where it was pretty tough was just quite refreshing. Mm. Oh, I think he had a fantastic game. and he, he, You mentioned the physicality. He does have a bit of a physical presence about him now as well, which I like to see. Uh, clearly he's put on some, some kilos and some muscle, but... Um, even just near the ball, like he's charging at it. I'm like, oh, you wouldn't want to get hit by him at the moment. Um, it's great to see. Now, I'll, I'll, Paul's not with us tonight, but um, I, he gave me his votes, and he's gone with uh, Tom Atkins for the three votes. Um, he, I thought Tom had a great second half. Uh, maybe not the best first half, but that's okay. Uh, he also went Zach Guthrie. He's given Zach Guthrie the two votes, uh, So, uh, and he's given Asava the one vote there. So I think... Uh, well, I don't have too many arguments with either of your votes or, or Paul's votes. There's no uh, jaw-dropping moments there. Now, mine, a little bit different again. Uh, and maybe I got carried away with his first two goals in the first quarter, but I, lo- I loved what Zach Tui did um, when the game was still pretty hot for us in those first three quarters. Uh, I thought he was pretty good all night long. So I gave him the three votes. I went Isaac Smith for the two votes. And uh, my boy Max Holmes, I gave him the one for it. I think he, he'll probably get more of the ball as the season goes on. Uh, but he was using it so well and he covers the ground beautifully and he makes good decisions. And I just loved every every time he touched the ball, good things happened um, the other night. So I think just snuck him in there for the one vote. But there's all, as, as these things, as with all of these things, there's always some unlucky players uh, with these votes. And uh, by the way, we're calling this the, well, got, I'm going to bring up the leaderboard, but um, we are calling this the, the Brad Close medal, because uh, Brad Close is very close to my heart. Uh, so what have we got here? Ah, all right. So Zach Guthrie is leading the Brad Close medal after one round. He's on five votes, and we have a four-way tie uh, on three votes with uh, Isaac Smith, Zach Tui, Asava Radagalea, and Tom Atkins. So can Zach Cuth- Guthrie continue on and uh, take out the Brad Close medal? We're going to have to figure out a way to get Brad Close to award the medal at the end of the year. Somehow I've got to use some contacts and get Brad on board to award the medal at some point. That'd be nice. So anyway, we're off to a good start. All right. So let's uh, let's have a bit of a look at what else happened. There's a couple other games, or a couple of games, just one game's just finished uh, and there's another game going on. I'm not sure the, of the current score, but when I last checked, uh, the Hawks were leading the Bombers by a couple of goals or something like that. And do you have the current score in front of you, Anna? I've just pulled up the results. Oh, really? Hey, what's happening here? Tell, please oh, tell me the Bombers, the top four team, the Bombers are, are flying at the moment. Essendon 85, Hawthorne 37 with five minutes to go in there. Essendon 85, so. was it? Essendon's up by 48 points at the moment. I so. picked them, everyone. I told you. I, <laughs> I told, no. There you go. Are we top of the ladder? I'll be, I don't know. We'll have to do, we'll have to do a special video about that one. No, good on them. Um, all right, so we had the draw. Well, just going back a little bit, we had the draw on the on the Thursday night. Not much of a game, really, unless uh, a little bit exciting in the fourth quarter there, but uh, really not really much to say uh, about that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it was a bit of an average kind of game, really. Tim Durano did pretty well in his first hit out there. Uh, North Melbourne, they'll be happy. They uh, they knocked off West Coast uh, by less than a goal. Harry Sheasel. Talk to me about Harry Sheasel. Yeah, do you like what you see from the from the, the high draft pick from the North play? 34 touches. I think uh, was it the second, the most by debutantes, uh, the debutants since uh, 1984. I think Diesel Williams might have a little bit more, but crazy. He's going to be good. I think it's great. I think it's refreshing. Oh. I think it's great when you just see a debutant come into their own. Um, it was a perfect game for both sides. You can see they're going to be pretty even. Yeah. Um, you know, the AFL did some fixturing really on purpose this season compared to, I remember round one last year we played Essendon. Yeah. Saturday afternoon. It wasn't really a blockbuster game, but um, they really bought into a lot of rivalries, a lot of what happened last year. And I, I think it's worked. I really think it's worked in the favour of how many mm. fans. We saw 150,000 across two nights at the G, um, the Thursday and the Friday night, yeah, because right. obviously Richmond Carlton's the tradition, but 
we haven't played Collingwood in opening round in God, I don't even know ever. So oh, no, no, it was a couple of years ago actually. It's I've forgotten about that as well. It was I think yeah. we beat them, but we very rarely play a big game on a, on an opening one. But I think we might have played maybe two or three years ago, something like that. Anyway, um, but yeah, yeah, not doesn't happen very often. Uh, I watching that North West Coast game. I, I think it was at Marvel. Um, it was great to see that the first and second tiers were full. So it was almost like a deliberate decision, I think, to let everyone sit on that second tier rather than the third tier. It just created such a great atmosphere. You could hear it through the coverage. It was fantastic. Um, I, I hope they continue to do that for those lower drawing games. Uh, and don't Because you just watch it on TV. And it, you know, if it's a, it's a game with 30,000 people there, you know, there's hardly anyone on the second level because you've got to pay you $80 or whatever it costs these days. Uh, everyone's up the top and everyone's down the bottom. It's like, it just doesn't. I don't know. It's too spread out. I'd, I'd rather cram people in a little bit mm-hmm. um, if you're able to. Uh, Nick Larkey was the other one that kicked six goals too there. So uh, moving on to the Port Brisbane game. Uh, I, I thought Brisbane was going to win this one. I tipped Brisbane, but uh, unfortunately North, uh, Port got over the top, uh, smashed them in the second half by 10 goals, absolutely killed them. Uh, and uh, Jason Horn francis uh, looks like he's going to be okay uh, with the power for the rest of his career. I think he'll be fine. Um, he looked pretty impressive as well. Uh, now, what's going to happen at the match review uh, with uh, Cozzy Pickett? Uh, did you see uh, he was in, he was launching himself into outer space, into Bailey Smith's uh, lower jaw there? Uh, I don't know how he's... I think he might be in trouble. I think one of the key points, and I look at the Stewart incident last year, was, yep, Stewart went past the ball, but he was bracing for impact, as you are expected to do yep. in AFL, yep. um, in our sport. So... That I've never seen that before. I thought that was disgusting behaviour. Mm. I just don't know with with everything going on at the moment, and the players would know about all these concussion, all these um, class actions, and everything that's going on in the media. What, like play as hard as you can, but mm. that is a targeted attack. And in my opinion, he should get six to eight weeks. I know he won't, wow. but when you s- step back and you look at that, that's that's. In, in the real world, that's that's an assault charge, right? Yeah. So you look at – you can't do that in footy. And yeah. if you go past and you bump, um, yep, and I look at the Stewart incident and he got four. I'm surprised he didn't get more because he went past the ball, but he didn't do an action where I'm, – I'm sure in his head he went, all right, with the split second he had, I'm going to – I don't have to – I can just literally – he could have kept running past him. There was no – he wasn't even on the same line as him the way that I guess you look at a lot of incidents where they're on the same line. Mm. And he made the conscious decision to launch himself in an assault way. And I think that should be six to eight weeks. We don't want that in our game. Yeah, I've, and I, I agree. Sorry, I'll, I'll add one point. I think it was, mm. I think it's fantastic. Bailey Smith got up and continued playing, but I hope that's not a defining factor in the decision because you know, if he was knocked out, there would be uproar. And when, thank goodness he got up and continued playing, but that should not be a defining factor. And that is that seems to be a defining factor in a lot of decisions made, which it should never be. Because we don't know if this is going to damage Bailey Smith in 15 no, years. No, you know, know, look at Max Rook, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly. He's saying he's having issues now. Gary Ablett Sr. came out the other day and said the same thing, and he's well past his playing career. So, you know. I was going to just add, I, I think, it would make a. It would be significant if the AFL match review made it a, a, a really big point of suspending this guy for more, four plus four plus weeks. Let's say, normally in these situations, it's like, oh, you know, it was fine. He got up again. No, nothing to see here. But it would it would be a significant thing if they said actually no. It was the action, not the not the outcome, because uh, it's always about the outcome. It always it seems to be the outcome, and it's outrageous that. You're looking at that, comparing that to the Stuart, and it's not the same incident. It's a totally different type of, of bump, but one seems like more of a bad judgment, uh, the, the Stuart one, uh, and deserved his time off. Don't get me wrong. Um, the other one was just, as you said, you were you to use the term assault. It was intended to hurt, and I was like, mate, the guy's in the kicking action. Spoil him or tackle him. Like, it's a pretty you, – you've made it – We'll just know, continue to run past the ball. Yeah. Right, you know, yep. it's almost know. too late at that point. Anyway, oh, we digress. <laughs> we, we digress. All right. Uh, and so the Melbourne – Melbourne uh, smashed the dogs. That was pretty straightforward. We, we talked about that. And then Sydney have got up against the Gold Coast. And I think uh, what the – who won the other – oh, so, yeah, uh, Gold, GWS beat, uh, beat Adelaide there. So that's – 
probably I think Adelaide at one point looked like they were going okay. Uh, all right, so shall we have a little, have a bit of a look at um, the match preview, match preview against Carlton. Uh, let me just get my notes up, Anna. Okay, so we've won the last five out of six, Anna. So I think we should be going to this pretty confident against Carlton. We did lose a game at Kidinia Park by a couple of points. I think it was around just as COVID was starting to tip off a little bit there. Um, and the last time we played him was round 18 last year, uh, where we won by 30 points. Looked like we had the game under control pretty much the whole night, uh, in front of about seven, just on tick under 70,000 people there. Um, Carlton was flying at that point in time. I think they were 11 and five, almost guaranteed to play finals. Um, struggled after that game, didn't they? I think they were like, oh, hang on, we're a little bit off the pace here, um, against Geelong and we were just, we just made them look, um, way off it. So, uh. Tom Stewart didn't play that that game either last time, so we probably well unless he makes a miraculous recovery, and we won't be having Tom Stewart again this week. Um, and Charlie Kerno was pretty impressive uh, to start the game at least. Anyway, he had three goals just uh, early into the second quarter. There, he was on fire. Uh, it looked like oh my god, it's going to be one of those nights where Carlton has a big win over us. But uh, he didn't really do much after that. Uh, Sam DeConning was was terrific. In uh, I think he wouldn't even played twenty games at that point, but he absolutely blanketed Harry McKay. Um, and uh, another guy who won't be there next week is Sam Walsh. He's um, for, uh, he's he's going to be out. So no Stewart, no Sam Walsh. Uh, there'll be a few few teams uh, or few both sides will have some players out this week. And clearly we'll have Joel Salwood, who's probably almost one of the best on the ground last time as well. So he's not going to be there. Uh, and I think we might remember that game as where Je- it was a game where Jezza was on the boundary and swung around and kicked a goal. It was one of, almost a goal of the year, really. I don't know if you remember that one, but uh, if I had some vision, I would have queued it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, I think as we we talked about the ins and outs a little bit, but I think Tom Stewart's going to be an obvious out. I think Parfit might be a bit nervous uh, whether he keeps his spot. I hope he does. I, I want to keep guys in the team if we can. Uh, I do want to give some opportunities to some other guys, though. I think Jack Bowes... Uh, he might have played in the VFL practice match the other day, so he maybe could come into consideration. Um, and I'd love to see Jai Clark uh, get his first game early in the season as well. So there's probably a couple others there, but I think those two guys will come in for Tom Stewart and uh, Brandon Parfit. Do you have any thoughts on potential ins and outs for the Carlton game or any other thoughts on the Carlton game for that matter? So, yeah, obviously we can't, obviously completely based it on the way that we played it last year. But I remember I was on the radio talking about the team with a couple of boys on a Friday. And um, I went with the crazy call of putting Blix down back. And mm. they were like, you, you're insane. <laughs> so stupid. Which it's all in good fun. And yep, I um, yep. always have good fun, but um, I made the bold call of that and it really worked in our favor. And we did that because Stuart was out. Carlton's realistically basing off one round here and all of last season, Collingwood's the fastest team. Physically, they're very quick. Carlton is a little bit slower, which works in our favour because you looked at all the docos we talked about. We're not that fast. No. And that's okay. We we have to play to our other strengths to mitigate that. We so move the ball quickly, but we just by yeah. foot, we're not the fastest. Yeah. So, and possibly with... Sam DeConing, depending on what the outcome of anything there is, we might not have him in. So we might throw a Sava back, which I hope – I'm sorry, we might keep a Sava back, which I do hope we do. Um, and then we bring Blix in. And um, I was thinking Segler to come in as the backup for Stanley because we don't want Blix, you know, having to – Yeah, true. Which – because I really – I trust Blix as a defender as much as I trust him anywhere on the ground. He he He's the utility. We, we should – be able to we have him in because when injuries like this happen we can shift to ensure that he can play a key role somewhere else it might be that that first time that uh, maybe other teams have already tried it where you have your uh, second ruckman as a as a a sub as the fifth player on your bench i know that's was talked about being more of a possibility for Mm. for structural reasons going forward um Possibly. It's, the weather's still good to carry two ruckmen. I don't know yeah. about it in the middle of winter when it's when you're playing in the slop, but... Uh, well, hopefully we can try it while it's good. Yeah. And I think maybe Cole Jasny, well, he should be, depending on all of his concussion um, issues, should be coming up, coming back in. We just need a bit more stability back there because Asava, naturally, it's his first game in defence. Mm. And at the end of the Collingwood game, he was the only key that was really still with it, you know? 
Stewart out, De Koning not fully fit, no Kolajasny, Buse and Chewy were, you know, not at their full strength. So we, he needs a bit of that stability that Kolajasny does bring. See, I, I didn't have Kolajasny in my ins only for the reason that I'd heard somewhere that he might not be back till round three. Mm. Um, so that was more my thinking. Not that I, it's about guessing it correctly. I don't necessarily care about that at all. Um, but I just thought, oh, they're, they're being very careful with him with because he's had a few concussions before. So um, And possibly I'll, Duncan. Yeah, Duncan could be another one that still might be a little bit longer as well. So, um, Well, I hope now we're actually, after we kind of see saw what happened with Hawkins, we... Mm. As I'd much rather Duncan not come into round ten if he comes in fully fit and plays out the season, you know. Well, you can't so. argue that we've got depth in this team, yeah, so absolutely. you know we're just gonna we should just trust that and, and rely on it. All right, now I mentioned earlier, Anna, uh, and, and you can be pretty quick with this if you like. Um, why is Geelong going to lose against Carlton? <laughs> oh, Try, you have to wear the your Carlton. Well, you're not a Carlton supporter, but pre- pretend for a moment you're a one-eyed Carlton supporter. They are my second team, just due to family. Oh, really? So oh, yeah, you mentioned that. We're split, we're split down the middle. Well, my dad's <laughs> sister and mother are Carlton and he and his father are Geelong and then yes. actually I followed that. So um, I just think, as we said, we're the hunted, Geelong's the hunted. So everyone wants to take revenge on us. We beat almost every side after – we did. We beat every side after round nine last year. So why – Carlton go, why not us? They, they're younger, they're a bit hungrier. We looked really tired. That might take a few weeks to get over. We don't know what kind of training blocks Geelong's, Geelong's doing. Plus, we saw the way that Carlton, their, their Twin Towers basically annihilated us in the first half last year. Mm. Um, we weren't quick to make changes in round one against Collingwood. And if we're not quick to make those changes, that they kick six goals. They, they do a lot more damage. And but. We look at the game, it was round 18. We were on our roll. We were very much ready to push for a premiership. By the time we played Carlton, there was no stopping us. But there is very much stopping us in round two. So I look at their twin towers. Tall tall footballers and tall forwards never go out of style. No matter how quick the game gets, tall forwards are extremely hard to match up. They're both, I think they're both common medalists, Mackay and um, Erno. We've got a couple too, but we... We've got a couple too, but I, um, (laughs) you know, I look at, there, there wasn't much promise in that draw. I think both teams played pretty average, Carlton and Richmond, but Carlton have a lot more potential. And as I said about Collingwood, they're young. And as another year passes by, these players are closer and closer, closer to their prime. Mm. So, yeah. And I think you nearly convinced me there. I don't know, but I'll, I'll put it to I'll put a vote to the viewers and the listeners as well. Um, like let let us know in the comments. Did Anna convince you that we're we're due for our to start the season zero and two, and Carlton are going to do a number on us? Well, it's, it must mustn't be fun doing that, Anna. I, I I'll have to get Paul to do that next time. <laughs> I'm the eternal realist, so I think like this a lot. So do when you, you really? said that to me before, I was like, eh, easy. I'm I'm okay. <laughs> Well, maybe I should have done the opposite then. Why is Geelong <laughs> going to win? All right, let's 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 round it off really quick. Uh, it's a bit of Tommy Hawkins trivia. It's Tommy, uh, we're playing Carlton. Tommy debuted against Carlton in 2007. Now, it's uh, I was going to do the first, first of the hit the buzzer kind of trivia, but it's just you, Anna. So how many games did Tom Hawkins play in his first season in 2007? I'll tell you, how, I'll, and I'll, you know, we'll see how many, there's five questions, so we'll see how many you get right. Oh, gosh. Maybe 10? I'm he probably way off. He played seven games. Okay. He did have I, a nice yeah. stretch of five or six games, uh, had a bit of a break for about 10 weeks, came back and played a couple more, uh, and, uh, yeah, went nuts. He, he I did. get all of these wrong. My dad's going to be devastated. Well, if you can get a couple wrong, you'd be oh, – well, yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> I wonder how many your dad will get right if he's watching this. Um, see he how will many. be. He will right. be. I'll put this down. I don't know. All right. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Anna, and, Anna and Nick, uh, how many goals did Tom Hawkins kick in 2007? Oh, you're killing me. I was six years old. <laughs> don't I don't care. remember. Get, you, the history books are there, Anna. Don't. I know. I'm pretty good with my long history, but I must admit, Dad's always on the shoulder to help. Um, I'm he can't, he can't save home. you now. He can't save you. Um, he's just in the next room. No. Um, how many goals in those seven games? Yeah, in the seven games. 20? Oh, no, he kicked uh, 12 goals, but he had two games with a uh, f- bag of four. Yeah, right. And, and, another, and the first, and his debut game, he kicked three. So, 
Uh, he did he did go a few games without kicking any, so he seemed to sort of you know fire up a few games and then sort of struggle to get into a few other games. Uh, all right, what is Tom Hawkins' highest number of disposals in a game? Bonus points if you can tell me what year it was or which team it was against. Oh, my God. Remember, there's a theme here, Anna. There's a little hint. Who we're playing this week, maybe. Okay, so it was against Carlton. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, gosh, what year? I have no idea. Don't worry about the year. Just what, roughly what's his highest number of disposals in a game? I would say probably around 25 or something. 27. There you go. At 93, 93% efficiency. Wow, eh? Hey. He th- throw in six goals as well. Oh, six, yeah. A lazy six goals to go with your 27 touches. Not a bad effort from Tom back in twenty yeah. around 19, 2017. Um, all right, how many times, your dad should, Nick, you should know this one, how many times has Hawkins kicked 60 goals or more in a season? Okay. <laughs> I know he did it in 2012. Very good. Um, so that's one. Uh, I would probably say every year since 2012 almost. No, he's only done it five times. He's been very close a lot of the time. So, no. yeah, maybe he had a bit of an injury run there for a little bit. So, uh, five times, 2012, 2014, 2018, 21, and 2022. Um, so, yeah, he's still pretty good effort, though. Pretty good turnout. Uh, last question, um, and this is – your dad will definitely probably be better to answer this one because it's a bit of a – it's about the number 26. So – uh, the number 26 is for Geelong and known for giving away lots of free kicks. Tommy, you got to pull, he's pulled his head in a little bit in recent years, but he used to give away heaps of free kicks. Who has given away more free kicks in their career within in the number 26? Tom's, Tom Hawkins or Barry Stoneham? Oh. I'm going to say Barry Stoneham. Yes. Yeah, yes. only because that's quite niche. <laughs> that's quite a niche question. Yeah. I like that question. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, Hawkins around about, I can't remember the exact, he's about under 350, but Barry Stoneham, 403, and he's played like <laughs> 90 less games or whatever. We, we actually had you Barry Stoneham. Somewhere, right? <laughs> it, it's a good little segue. We had Barry Stoneham come on Paul's Behind the Play show the other week, and that was a great chat. It, was, it went for about an hour, and he was talking about... Um, uh, his career and Paul just finished up with a couple of stats at the end and just threw that one in about how many free kicks he gave away in his career which Barry actually didn't remember that how many free kicks he gave away he was a bit shocked by that so um, but anyway that was a bit of fun all right thanks Anna it's been a good show we'll, we'll close it out but um, as uh, as we always say uh, thank you for for watching or listening if you're listening to this uh, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment we want your comments in the chat as well uh, thank you to all our patrons especially to the two Jareds uh, fantastic loyal patrons for almost a year now so fantastic job to those two so if you're not sure or check out our patreon site at the very least there's a few videos up there as well and we we do all our early release videos for paul's show too we've got um we've got terry degani who's a big youtuber uh carlton fan youtuber he's got about ten thousand subscribers on his blue abroad channel he's coming on paul's show uh this week dropping on tuesday morning so make sure you check that one out uh terry's terry's fantastic he's probably a big inspiration for me in terms of what we're doing with this show uh, and bringing in other people like like Anna and Paul and so forth. So um, he's very very professional at his at his YouTubing stuff. So he's great. Uh, and on Wednesday night, now Paul put out a video saying he's going to the launch of the new AFL twenty three game uh, on the twenty second, which is this week. Uh, I've just found out in not long ago that. Uh, He's got a plus one, and uh, Paul's asked if I can come along too. So I'm very pumped about that. Uh, I'm hobnobbing it uh, on the red carpet uh, on Wednesday night, <laughs> I think between six and nine or something like that. Um, so that should be fun to have a bit of a go at the new game. I'm not a massive gamer, but I am a little bit excited to see what all the fuss is about and uh, have a bit of a go at it and uh, and uh, have a chat with a few people and, and so forth. And So that'll be fun. I know Paul's absolutely going off his head. At it. He's so excited. He can't wait. Uh, Anna, thank you very much. I uh, really enjoy the chat with you. Uh, I think we've got, uh, yeah, I think, we'll th- I think we might even get the three of us back next week. We'll see how we go. Um, but it's been lots of fun as always. And uh, as we always say, everyone, go Catters. See you on the next one. Take care.